they're going on a little holiday. Tell me very quickly. If it, There you go, that was your little intro. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, holiday. You're going on holiday in October. Certainly am. Mm -hmm. Our first ever seven week holiday. It's going to be lovely. Good. Really but yes, I, I have to have a needle. Oh, no. Yeah, so a, a yellow fever vaccine, and okay. it terrifies me. Yeah. Once again, needles. Why? Because I know it's going to hurt. For a split second. Mm, yeah, Just well. Just teeth. Yeah, it's a terror. Not the you other have way. no idea how terrifying it is. Pinch yourself first on the other arm. <laughs> and experience a bit of pain. You'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, I know. I, I had to have a, um, a little skin cancer cut off my right oh, wow. skin bone. Yes. And they they couldn't do anything else but uh, skin graft. Yes. Because there's no skin to stitch. There's nothing. There's uh huh. No I can imagine. And I was pretty scared about that. And I had to have all these needles all the way around where they were cutting it out. Then on the, the graft where they took the graft as well. Mm -hmm. So piles and piles of Oh, my goodness. And this is why I like natural therapies. <laughs> well, let me do natural therapies. Don't take off skin, skin cancers. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. new leaf therapies. What's happening? Yeah. Here? So uh, there's just been so much, so much queries like because of our session last week which is yeah. fantastic so we've had people walking in saying i think i've got that mcas so the mast cell activation syndrome or the people who know they live near you know refineries or, or you know whatever's going on it sort of seemed to have struck a chord with people so one of the things that georgia and i did was uh tried to work out how we're going to start working out if people have this histamine sort of problem so remember the problem with the mcas was that it's a mast cell activation syndrome which means that and mast cells and histamine they are normal in the body yep. so when they are not misbehaving they are exactly what you need to help to heal your shin when you have a skin cancer removed. Yeah. They're what we need when we have an injury. They're what we need when we breathe anything in that we really shouldn't. So if we walk down the street and that a huge truck goes by with heaps of fumes, you need these reactions in your body. So I'm not talking about normal reactions doing a good thing. But things can trigger this mast cell activation syndrome. And that's when histamine goes awry. It's when it starts misbehaving and then it starts building up in tissues in the body. So just a reminder, the main areas in the body that it builds up are the spine, the brain, the uterus and the gut. So pretty much any stomach, small intestine, large intestine, unexplained pain. You know, the sort of things where people have gone and had you know, scans and ultrasounds and endoscopies and colonoscopies and everything looks fine. They're not going to see histamine in these tests because it's not what they're looking for. So, and same with things like unexplained menstrual pain and unexplained ovarian pain. Like it's one thing if we've got polycystic ovaries or endometriosis or uh, something like that where we know that there's a reason why people have pain and then we can use herbs, nutrition, supplements. There's lots of ways of of moving towards finding a solution for those people. But for me, in my clinic, the histamine is a new part of the solution, mm -hmm. which is really quite fabulous. So because we can use kinesiology to muscle test these things, we believe that people can go to their doctors and actually check histamine levels. And like I said last week, the magic number is eight. It should not be higher than eight. And I think it's a urinary histamine check, but it might be blood, not sure, ask your doctor. Sorry, I haven't got that far into it because, you know, we're, we're not doctors, so therefore we don't have access to all of these tests. Uh, but basically, that's something that people can do if they suspect it. But like I said, migraines. So if you're the sort of person who with changes in temperature or changes in weather or hormone fluctuations or when you get a cold or a flu, you know, migraines. How many people get migraines when something shifts in their world? And they often know what it is. You know, they know that, oh, well, of course I got a migraine because we came into cold weather. Or of course I got a migraine because, you know, it went over 33 degrees. You know, people know their triggers. Yeah. And these are the sort of triggers that can activate the histamine that's stored in the cells. And then that creates localised pain. Yeah. So for, for the, you know, we, we're picking up listeners every week that listen to this program. And, and it's surprising, really, because you talk to people and you've had a lot of um, calls and reactions yeah. from what we spoke about last week. but. To the new listeners who may have just tuned in today or just tuned in, 
Kinesiology, just to explain the, the, yeah, okay. I suppose the terminology or the meaning. Yes, so, so kinesiology uses, so firstly it's been around for about 70, 80 years, so it's not new, new, you yeah. know, it's been, and it was originally developed by physios and chiropractors to work out uh, the strength of individual muscles in the body. So it's not some ancient Asian Chinese. No, 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 it hasn't been used for 7,000 years like That's acupuncture. People, see, people think that. That's yes. what they think. Yeah. So, so it is, okay, so it is a relatively new science, and there's been a lot of research done on it. My guru, Dr. Charles Krebs, he has actually got proven scientific studies showing. Uh, the differences in muscles to allow them to lock and unlock, which is what we're after. Muscles will either lock if something is not creating a stress or they will unlock if something's creating a stress. And I know that seems weird, but that's what happens. But in the same way, uh, if someone has, say, shoulder issues and you're going to the physio and you are getting exercise to strengthen your shoulders, you're activating muscles mm -hmm. to be stronger. That's what you're trying to do. So with kinesiology, you can actually muscle test the muscles to see whether or not exercises are doing their job. Mm -hmm. So kinesiology can then isolate which muscles are the problem, whether or not it's, so for example with shoulders, it could be the deltoids, it could be the anterior deltoid, it could be the anterior serratus muscles, it could be the pec minor, the pec clavicular, the cl pec sternal, the mate. latissimus dorsis, you know, so, well there's lots of yeah. muscles around the area and you can actively muscle test each one individually. And then, so that's the physical kinesiology, then you can go into weird stuff like chakras and meridians. So, yeah, and I actually had a lady the other day, she wanted to go to a yoga class where they didn't talk about chakras and energy because she doesn't believe in any of that. And so I made sure when I did her kinesiology that I didn't go into any weird stuff that sometimes I would do yeah. because I'm just simply doing a process. So, you know, we really do listen to our clients about what they believe and what they don't. But yeah, so you can use kinesiology for things like learning problems. There's actually a whole process. It's about, uh, it's sort of about a 20 hour process in length, but it reintegrates uh, lots of parts of the brain. So that one is called LEAP. It's a learning enhancement acupressure program. And it particularly uses combinations of acupuncture points with muscle tests to access parts of the brain so that you can find out where the parts of the brain are working. So hippocampus is a memory center, so you can see if the hippocampus is up and running. Uh, the corpus callosum, it connects the two sides of the brain. So when people have that mental shutdown before, well, before going to a dentist, I know that I have corpus callosum shut down. I have no logical thinking when I have to get a needle. What did you call it? Corpus what? Corpus callosum <laughs> shut down. I get that one. Was that when you walk from one room, to you, you go get something, yes. you get to the other room, <laughs> <laughs> what did I come in here to get? Why does that happen? Yeah, well, it is, is it that sort thing? of thing. It is because you're not fully accessing the frontal cortex. Yeah. So that's where our memory centers, it's our problem solving, it's that sort yeah. of thing. And, and you, you know, stand walk, there. Walk back to the previous room. Yes. Do a lap. I think, oh, yeah, I know what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and movement activates muscle memory. And so, you know, that's why sometimes we walk out, we go, that's what it was. Yeah. You know, you walk back in feeling like a dingbat, but, you know, <laughs> at least you remember. <laughs> How many times have you, have you opened up the kitchen cupboard put something back in the fridge and you've, uh, have you done that? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. The milk in your hand uh -huh. and the, uh, the, the cupboard? Yes. And, Oh, hang on, that doesn't go there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so we are, so so there's, so there's does that sort of help with kinesiology? So it's yeah. a weird beast. We can use it for mm. spiritual, emotional, physical, biochemical yeah. stuff. But in relation to things like histamine, we can actually firstly ask the body whether histamine is causing an issue. And if it is, we can find out which body parts are, are being uh, damaged by it. Yeah, and the reason I asked you about the about the definition of it was because there are people that think, oh, that's just a lot of hobby cock, you know. Absolutely. And, and they think, I don't want to know anything about it. But yeah. when, you, when you explain what it is, yeah. they have a different, hopefully a different feeling. Well, it. the sort of funny thing is a lot of people have had it done and don't even know about it. So people who go to chiropractors, kinesi they will often do kinesiology by, say, touching parts of the spine and simply asking your arm to hold up mm -hmm. and seeing where it unlocks. Or they might be using that, so basically a big muscle test, or they might be asking your body about sugar or gluten or uh, something and seeing if it unlocks. So you can ask the body whether there's an energetic okay. imbalance with something we're eating or drinking or... And sometimes I say, if you don't want me to test it, I won't test it because... Sorry. 
Yeah. Yes, Once you know, you know. I was just thinking something funny. So the word, is that a Latin word or some bloke by the name of Kinesi that... Uh, that well, Kinesi means, it means the uh, science of muscle movement. Right, okay. Yeah. So that's the Latin, obviously, Latin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh. and that's why it was physios initially. I yeah. think back in the 50s and it was something to do with the smallpox vaccine and they were trying to work out how damaged muscles were. You know, it was something like that. Well, there you go. We've yeah. just um, educated five, six, seven thousand listeners. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. So, so, we, so we've been doing that. And then, of course, with um, acupuncture, uh, Rob's sort of trying to work out a process of helping to release these histamines in the body as well. So because, of course, what acupuncture does is to help to increase energy. Anywhere we have built up congestion or toxin, the meridians, so the energy flows in the body, aren't going to flow very well. So basically, from the acupuncture perspective, they use pulse checks. They've got all sorts of little checks in the body to see which meridians are flowing and which ones aren't. So lots of people get success with, say, sinus problems or pain because they're actually unblocking a blockage, allowing the energy to flow to that area. So with acupuncture, he's working on a protocol because he really didn't know about the process, you know, the MCAS either, the mast cell activation syndrome. So he's sort of working on a process there. Uh, and we know that it helps people with migraines and headaches and menstrual pain and that sort of thing. But it's been interesting sort of thinking about those symptoms throughout the week. And I suppose the other thing we chatted about last week was the environmental toxins. Mm -hmm. Like that's just been, once again, the research is not good. Yeah. And people might think they are living in, say, a really healthy place. But Georgia mentioned that there was a study done on breastfeeding women a 1,000 metres up in the air in Papua New Guinea. So they lived very, very high up in the mountains. They tested the breast milk and they were able to find toxins from nearly all over the world in that breast milk. So basically, I don't know whether you know this, but when planes travel, mm -hmm. we are taking toxins from China to Singapore to Brisbane to Melbourne to, you know, so toxins don't stay locally anymore. We know that they are travelling via the airways and we know that they are ending up in every every continent. You know, there really isn't anywhere that's untouched by toxins these days. So with their studies, they're thinking that the women in the highlands of New Guinea maybe have um, suffered some of those uh, toxins. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they found them. They yeah, absolutely right. know that. Oh, yeah. So it was in their breast milk. So these were people who had never left these highlands of Papua New Guinea. But funnily enough, the study was trying to work out whether or not it was healthier breastfeeding or healthier using formula. But it yeah. still showed, even with those toxins, it was healthier doing breastfeeding than not. Interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, wow, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, and with breastfeeding, there's been lots of studies, actually, and I don't know whether I mentioned it, but the last one I'd heard about was about 11 years ago, and it was uh, at the moment of birth, most babies in a, a small study, only like, uh, I can't remember, a couple of hundred babies, but... Most of them had over 200 carcinogenic substances in their spot in their um, cord. Right. Yeah, cord? yes, umbilical yeah. cord. So oh, basically, yeah, umbilical cord. Now that number has increased in the last. Yeah. So in, and not a huge amount by another 50 or something like that. So I think the average was just under yeah. 300, where it was about 220. So you know, it's gone up in the last dozen years or 10 years. So we know that these things are out there. We know they're getting into our bloodstreams, but what do we do about it? So yeah, so that's about really making sure that you think detoxification as a part of your daily program. Mm -hmm. Filtered water, herbal teas, green tea, organic where you can, uh, making sure you're getting your sunshine, making sure you are getting physical activity. When you walk on the grass, you are getting negative ions from the earth. It is literally grounding you and it is helping you give antioxidants into your body. We need to get outside. Even though there's toxins out there, we need to get outside, we need to get on the beach, we need to get on grass, we need to be in the mountains. We're on the road to self-destruction. Now, kinesiology, the, the most important thing is if they, people want to come and see you, give us some details about your... Yeah, so we're at New Leaf Natural Therapies, Therapies 94 Edith Street, Wynnum. It's Lynn and Sanu on the phone today. Our phone number is 3348 6098. And we've been chatting about this all week. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of like every time I come out of a client and I get another little light bulb, oh, my gosh, I, you know, this so was another new thing at seminar. Now, they'll take, if people are listening, they want to... Absolutely. 
have a chat to them. Yeah. So whack that phone number in again. So 3348 6098. 6098. All right. Thanks, Madonna. I think we have run out of time. We're heading towards the news pretty quickly. Beautiful. Um, look forward to your company again next week. Yeah. Next week is my last week. Uh, your friend will be back. We'll have to pay, play some Bee Gees. We will. We'll play some Bee Gees. Yeah. We'll <laughs> but uh, we probably won't have a, song, a time for a song. But thanks once again, Madonna. It's all, always good to have you yak and yeah. learn a little bit more. And we'll catch up with you again next week. Fabulous. Make See you then. Nice and easy. Thank you. Be listening at the same time next week to 